So in my practice, applications where I'm using Avitus are for any single or two-stage revisions for any type of periprosthetic infection, uh, whether or not you're doing a single versus a two-stage with a articulating spacer, a static spacer, uh, Avitus is open in every one of these cases specifically to efficiently debride the canals of the endosteum of the femur and tibia. Uh, other applications, obviously, you can use for bone harvesting, but that is less applicable in my practice. But any need to evacuate a canal, any need for a deep intramedullary or endosteal specimen at any point when I'm explanting a prosthesis for infectious etiology are the applications. Advantages specifically of the Avitus versus conventional technique is ease of use and efficiency. Prior to Avitus, most of the debridement was done via back cutting curettes, removing the biofilm and pseudomembrane. Visualization was extremely important to make sure you weren't leaving any behind. It was difficult to assess whether or not you had efficiently debrided these canals. Utilizing Avitus, it's a closed capture suction curettage system. So I don't really even need to be looking in the canals as long as I aggressively am kind of debriding the canals. I know utilizing the suction and the closed capture technique, I'm going to get pretty much anything and out of uh, anything and everything out of the canals. We also are using bacteriostatic and cytal agents, including Irocept, in between some of the uh, uh, the passes of the Avitus, just to kind of help kill any organisms within the canals as well. Uh, utilizing the Avitus, I usually spend about three to five minutes aggressively debriding the canals. Conventionally, it would take me upwards of 20 minutes to make sure I've had all the biofilm and, and membrane from these canals. This is a pre-op AP lateral and merchant view on an 80-year-old male who presented to my clinic. He had a previous total knee done in the remote past over eight years ago. Unfortunately, he suffered a small puncture wound while removing a lawnmower off of a truck in the fall of 2021. It was initially thought as nothing in the ER, but he developed persistent swelling over the next few months with pain. He subsequently went back to his primary surgeon where an aspirate was done along with an alpha defense and synovasure test, which did show a staph at the species, which was susceptible to multiple antibiotics. I, I brought in my infectious disease contact, and we both agreed that we could probably eradicate this infection at a high rate of success with a single stage revision. So he went to the OR, at which point we performed a, an explant of the prosthesis. Prior to doing this, we were doing essentially back cutting curettes, removing this endosteal biofilm or pseudomembrane that does begin to surround the prosthesis with a uh, persistent infection and can sometimes lead to aseptic loosening. So it's very important that you aggressively debride the canals of both the femoral and tibial side when you're doing these explants, whether you're doing a single versus two stage. So utilizing the Avitus is much more efficient and aggressive in terms of removing this biofilm. So we're near done debriding the canals and you'll be able to see most of the biofilm and any basic uh, infected or purulent synovial tissue from around the thermal component. So you're essentially looking at a well debrided cancellous uh, 4-in-1 cut femur. Uh, this is kind of what I'm looking for. Good, clean bone. You can see the cancellous bone specifically on that anterior chamfer cut. The majority of any type of biofilm or membrane is gone on the metaphyseal portion of the bone on the femur and along the synovial lining, both the medial lateral gutters and the anterior thermal cortex. And there is tactile feel within the canals as well. So you can kind of feel yourself scratching along that endosteal bone. You don't have to be too aggressive, but uh, you do want to make sure that you're aggressive enough to remove any of that biofilm, which specifically when you first start using it, you'll be able to see within the uh, canister. The other good feature about this is it is a closed capture system so we can contain a, an, an endosteal specimen and send it down specifically for culture and gram stain. And we do know in previous literature that some of the best tissue specimens for infected joints do come from the endosteum and this biofilm in, in the canals. You can obviously see it, it's a good amount of endosteal bone that we were able to debride within two to three minutes. You compare this to historic debridements where we're using back cutting curettes, you're not going to get nearly as clean and contained of a sample as this. This is what you can expect to get from the femoral and tibial canals with any type of debridement. And you can see uh, it's a large specimen. It's, it's good bone that you can easily send down for a tissue culture.
His incision is healing. His pain's controlled. We are trending his inflammatory markers uh, through infectious disease, which I believe are already trending to, to more normal limits, especially the CRP. Motion is zero to near 100 degrees already. He's currently in physical therapy, weaning off a of cane. So uh, thus far, what we're doing seems to be working. Obviously, he'll remain on daptomycin for a total of six weeks IV postoperatively, and then he'll be switched to an oral, oral suppressive agent for infectious disease, likely for another nine months for a total of suppressive agents for one year from his surgery, at which time we will likely remove all the agents.